Hey guys, been a minute, but uh, now three or four weeks late, we're going to talk about that Vanity Fair article. The cover to cover article or whatever it was, I'm not sure if I'm being honest with you, I haven't picked up the actual magazine, just uh, read the entire article online about 15 dozen times. And I had an interesting reaction to it, a reaction I wasn't expecting. Now, this isn't going to be a theorizing video or anything like that. This is more just going to be me rambling on and on and on about the way marketing increases the expectation for a story. Um, and I'm... There's a lot riding on episode nine for the fandom as a, as in general. Um, no matter what your take is on the sequel trilogy so far, there is a lot riding on this. And yeah, we got some fantastic stuff from the Vanity Fair article. Things like, uh, we now know that the desert planet that we saw in the trailer is not Tatooine or Jakku or Geonosis or whatever. It is Pasana. Passana? Uh, not quite sure. I think it's Passana. Um, even though that's not quite how I would pronounce it when I read it, but that's what I hear everybody else saying, so I'm just going to say that. Um, we know that the Knights of Ren are confirmed to be a player somewhere in there. Uh, we also got minor confirmation somewhere in there that I only saw at Slimo underscore, I think, is the username on Twitter. Um, fantastic source, source for Star Wars news, by the way. She tweeted out something along the lines of, I can't believe they stuck this in there or whatever. And it's a minor spoiler. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, saying that, yes, that was a Knight of Ren that Kylo killed or, you know, body slammed or ground slammed, whatever, in the trailer. Um, I can't find it in the article, but uh, I trust Slima over my... <laughs> Uh, Star Wars fan journalistic skills. Um, but with that being said, if I'm being honest, I mean, I, I downloaded that trailer and ran it through Premiere real quick and went frame by frame by frame by frame, basically as soon as I got home from Celebration. And, I mean, to me, I, th I thought that was already kind of a given. Like, that looked like a Knight of Ren to me. But, you know, anyways, whatever. Uh... But my overall reaction to this Vanity Fair article, while, I mean, it, Starcrossed is my background as I smack the crap out of my streaming mic, I absolutely loved it. But a part of me wished if there was, like, I'm, I, I'm not saying I'm upset that I know the things that I know in, from the Vanity Fair article, but I am, I'm half thinking about trying to skip the full length trailer that comes that will probably come out in September, October. I don't know why that is. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm, I'm my subconscious, my subconscious fan brain, that wizard brain in the back of my head is going, it's going to be another rogue one. You're going to build a movie in your head and you're not going to be able to handle what the reality of the story is. And I don't know. Don't get me wrong. Like I said, I've said this, I said this 30 seconds ago, probably. Um, I enjoyed the Vanity, Fair, the Vanity Fair article. It's just... I'm concerned. I am concerned if Ben Solo is redeemed. I'm concerned if Ben Solo is not redeemed. I'm concerned if Ben Solo is redeemed but dies. I'm concerned about the... As much as I adore that f section of the Star Wars fandom, the Raylo side of fandom, if Raylo doesn't happen in the way that each individual, you know, Raylo member, uh, Raylo believer, I'm not sure, they call them each other Raylos, but um, what each individual Raylo fan sees as their actualized Raylo. So does Raylo mean just the connection between the two? Does that mean romance in between Kylo or Ben and uh, Ray? Does that... Is it... And 
I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm kind of already starting to brace for whatever the end of episode nine is going to be because there's going to be upset fans from this. And I think, I don't know. Like, it's a, it's a strange feeling um, because I am personally loving Star Wars right now. I mean, I am currently halfway finished with why we love Star Wars and because I take the just dust jackets off Alphabet Squadron. Um, and they're both incredible books. One's a canon story. The other one's written by um, someone I want to be when I grow up. Um, Ken Knapsack uh, from uh, the Knapsack Files, uh, Collider Jedi Council, and the Force Center feed. Um, but... <sighs> I feel like I'm concerned. I'm already starting to kind of brace for the online fandom. And you guys might have seen that I, a, I haven't been posting as many videos. And it's not that I don't want to talk about Star Wars. It's just I'm, I'm, I think I'm overthinking what the fandom is feeling. Like I don't, I'm not quite, I, I don't feel like I'm in sync with the rest of the fandom, if that makes sense. It's almost like I'm getting this weird, I don't want to call it a sense of dread, but it's a sense of, oh, and then we're going to hit the down cycle, and then we're going to hit the up cycle. All of this has happened before, and all of this will happen again. Every single time a new Star Wars movie comes out, it's there's a side that loves it, there's a side that hates it, and the side that hates it, in a lot of ways, gets propagated by the expectations that those fans had coming into the movie. And I'm just... I don't know. Like, I, I'm seeing this... Like, I've been even less active on Twitter because right after that Vanity Fair article came out, I just started seeing my feed completely flooded with Ben Demption confirmed and everything like that. And it's like, listen, I'm I'm on board with Ren Demption. I am a hardcore Ben Demption fan. I am a... Some people would not consider me a Raylo, but... Because I don't believe in a romantic Raylo, I very much do not want a romantic Raylo. I do want a, a connection between the two um, characters. In that Kylo Ren goes good because Rey shows um, the good in him. The She basically pulls the good out of him and goes, here, see, look, this is what you could be. Um... And that, that's what I want. But I'm also seeing this possibility in my head. What if instead that scene that we saw in the trailer of him killing a Knight of Ren, that's not him helping Rey. That's not him leading a Stormtrooper rebellion. That's just an internal squabble in Civil War. What if that's the opening shot? Uh, what if... Hux and uh, Allegiant General Pride. God, I love Richard E. Grant. Um, and Hux got the Knights of Ren together and some stormtroopers while Kylo Ren is leading some stormtroopers by fear and they're in the middle of a civil war thing and it's all going to be like this three-way race in between our heroes, Ray, Finn, Poe, Rose... Um, and oh my god, why can I not remember her character's name? Oh my god. The, the new, oh, the new character. Um, well, there's two new characters. Naomi Aki's character and, uh, Russell's character. Carrie Russell's character. I can't remember the names. You know that I've read that article about 15 times, but you get my point. Um... There's going to be like maybe a three-way race. And that's a possibility. Maybe that's what J.J. Abrams and Chris Terrio decided to write for episode nine. I don't want that. But what if that's what happens? And like I said, I'm seeing just, you know, Raylo confirmed, Ben Demption confirmed, you know, all up and down Twitter for the past two, three weeks. And it's like, guys, I, I, I love you. And I think that you guys are on the right track. And I'm in agreement with you guys, but what happens when it doesn't happen? 
are we going to start seeing like there was, I don't know. There was, I saw br very briefly a little blip on the Twitter drama sphere of guys like Luke deserved better or something like that guy wearing that t-shirt at galaxy's edge. And I don't know what, what was up with that, but like, what if in a year somebody's going to go to galaxy's edge with Ben sky or Ben solo deserved better. Be kind of a flipping of those uh, sides. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, Star Wars Celebration is always going to be a thing, and it will always be a unifier for Star Wars fans, but I don't know. The movies always seem to divide, and I don't know. Marketing in general can just, it can build stuff up and take it from a guy like me who did not temper his own expectations and ended up disliking a Star Wars movie for the first time in my life. I didn't like a Star Wars movie and I still don't like the Star Wars movie. Every time I try and watch Rogue One, I end up just seeing more and more things to get annoyed about in a super petty fashion. And it's stupid petty stuff like the camera angle on this didn't really function well and it didn't mesh with the pacing of the shot before it or the shot three shots before it. Like, th that's me. I'm, I'm that guy when I'm watching Rogue One. I'm an absolutely awful person. Um, but that all started because I didn't... I, I built a movie in my head. I knew what the story of Rogue One was. I knew what my expectations for Rogue One was when I was going into that theater. And it wasn't what I wanted. And that's the end of the day. It, it wasn't what I wanted and it wasn't what I was expecting, so I didn't like it. And that's what happened in 99 when we all went to go see episode one. That's what happened in 2002. That's what all happened in 2015. That wasn't very, that wasn't a huge thing, but TLJ was definitely a massive thing. I've got a funny feeling that, I, I'm not saying that it's an inevitability that the Rise of Skywalker is going to be um, a divisive film i'm saying that it can be or it could be it shows promise to be because people are so invested in the character of ben solo slash kylo ren people are so invested in the character of ray people are so invested in the character of finn that i'm i'm concerned that a two to three hour movie is not going to be able to <laughs> tie everything together, at least not in a satisfactory way for the majority of fans. They're going to have to hit basically like 55% of the fan base. Um, or it, it's my hope that they're just going to tell what they think is the best story for them as professional storytellers, as in Chris Terrio and J.J. Uh, Abrams. Who knows? We'll see. Either way, I am still excited for it. I just, I want to just say to whoever you are watching this video, just remember they're, they can be incredibly important movies. My, my personal faith, as in like my religion, my spirituality, is in part based on Star Wars, but they're, they're, they're still just stories. It's okay to not like the way a story ends, and it's okay to not like um, the direction of a character or a story arc. Just, yeah, it will be okay, even if it's not something that you don't like, or even if it is something that you don't like. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. You guys get my point, though. All right. Thank you guys very much for listening to me ramble on and on, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. And may the force be with you. Take care.